Hi, this is Ed from Rank. Today we're talking about spindles. There's a lot of different features out there and a lot of people will try to convince you that a really great spindle will make the grass get cut quicker, but in reality it's all about the reliability. You want a really, really reliable spindle because that contributes to your downtime and your operating cost. We're going to go over a lot of the different uh, failure modes of what's at, uh, happening in spindles. We're looking at some of the other spindles um, in the market too here. We're going to talk about things like greasable versus non-greasable. Um, and some of those different uh, questions. So first off, um, what are some of the major failure modes? Uh, the first would be that oftentimes, especially in the bottom of your spindle, you can get something wrapped around the bearing. It could be a plastic bag, it could be a fertilizer flag, uh, it could be a piece of twine or the fabric from a silt fence, something like that. It'll get wrapped around the seal here, climb up into the bearing, and destroy everything really quickly. And so, um, a lot of different spindles have different methods out there. What we have right here is the radius of this little cap. This chamfer is up inside the housing here. So anything that gets caught on there will wrap around this little lower portion and not around the bearing itself. Um, you can see uh, this has something similar um, on a John Deere. Um, forget who this is with, but again, although when you have this square shoulder, uh, sometimes stuff will still climb and jump in there. It's important to have um, a little notch there where it can't climb into. So keeping things from getting wrapped around the spindles, real important. The other thing is contamination, um, especially from pressure washing, uh, dust, grit, fertilizer, over time that all gets to the spindle. It's really important to keep that out. Um, bearing should last a really, really long time as long as it's not contaminated. For example, just think about the wheel bearing in your car. It's not uncommon in a passenger car to get 150, 200,000 miles from a bearing um, without ever re-greasing it or anything like that. So um, keeping the grit out is really, really important. On the top, you have gravity working against you. And so um, most spindles nowadays have some form of a top cap. Um, what we have here is uh, a top cap that closely fits the housing here. Actually, I don't recommend pressure washing right against the spindle, but if you were, that water that goes in the crack here will go through this groove and pour out the other side before climbing up against the uh, seal. So there's an upper seal here. We actually, this is a dual chamber spindle. We actually put grease in the upper chamber here. Um, and that keeps the contamination from getting to the bearing. On the bottom, again, this labyrinth here um, keeps you from getting water in there. If you do uh, spray water in here, it'll run around and out the bottom side. On the bottom, you have gravity working with you, which is um, uh, very important. Um, so uh, that's some different things. Here's, here's a cap from a, another machine, all kinds of different caps out there. So keeping the grit out is real important. Um, the other thing is the bearing itself. The bearing um, is subject to a lot of speed. Um, oftentimes, the spindle spins faster than the engine itself. Um, the spindle is also subject to impact. Um, one of the worst things you can do on a spindle is to hit, uh, if you're going off a curb, you hit your blade against that curb, or if your trailer has a metal lip on it, you come up over the trailer and hit that lip. That's really, really bad for the spindle, that impact. Um, but there's a lot of different options out there. Um, <clears throat> this is a bearing from one of our spindles. So here you see Fairly large in size, um, single row bearing. Um, one thing to always keep in mind though is that a bigger bearing is not always better because the bigger the bearing, the faster the balls travel. Um, and the smaller the bearing, the less load it can hold, but the balls are moving slower. So there's a trade off between big bearings and small bearings. This seems to be about an ideal size. This bearing here is that of a John Deere commercial mower. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but the balls are also going a little bit slower, so um, it really just depends on the application. Here we have a double row bearing from an X mark, and so they're sharing the load across two sets of balls, but the balls are also much, much smaller than in a plastic cage. Um, double row bearings definitely have some advantage with uh, thrust loads, but um, they also are very difficult because when you machine the housing, if, if they're not perfectly aligned, they get pinched up real easily. 
Um, so they're harder to uh, put in terms of an application, but um, do offer a few advantages. We've gone with this bearing. It's been very, very robust. It seems to be about the perfect size uh, for what we're doing. We also get to put a real big shaft in there. And so um, in terms of things like keyways and bending the shafts, it's really not an issue with a uh, big bearing like this versus a smaller um, shaft like that. <clears throat> and, and even then, just, just notice, okay, the threading here versus the size of this wall, this wall here is pretty thin. And so this is where, if you have impact, the shaft is most likely to bend. When you have a big sturdy shaft like that, it helps a lot. So those are some of the different bearing options that are out there. We'll get into seals in a second. So housings, um, you have iron housings, you have aluminum housings. And it's really a cost thing. Uh, it's not gonna make mower cut grass uh, any faster. Um, aluminum is a much softer material, so you have to spread that load further apart. Iron is much, much stronger, so the part can be um, a lot smaller uh, to install. <clears throat> and most spindle damage doesn't necessarily come from the spindle. Um, housing bent, usually something else is gonna uh, break first. Um, so I think it's not the biggest selling feature out there. We've chosen cast iron. Um, it's been very sturdy for us. And um, most decks, whether they have a large flange like this with a softer material or a smaller flange like this with a stronger material, it has about the same impact on the deck. If you hit something really, really hard, uh, you can bend the deck. And um, when you have a big flange that's soft, it's not necessarily gonna protect the deck um, any more than something like this. So it's really about the cost of manufacturing. Aluminum's gonna conduct heat a little bit better, but also if you're producing that much heat, you have a different problem to start with. Um, <clears throat> so definitely two different camps, but not a big feature difference. Greasable versus non-greasable. This is an age old debate. And um, we've chosen to go to a sealed spindle. In fact, it has two chambers that are sealed. Um, in my mind, it's not necessarily only greasable or sealed. There's two types of sealed housings or non-greasable housings. One is where, for example, this spindle right here, if you have a bearing like this just floating in there and um, nothing else, you have the grease that's in here for life and that's it. Now the other way to do sealed housing is like what we have here. We have an upper bearing and lower bearing, and we fill this housing here with about half or two thirds full of grease. We also put grease above this bearing here, and that grease continues to keep the seals um, supple. It continues to leach oil down into the bearing, keep the grease in the bearing fresh. And there's enough grease in here to last 20,000 hours. Um, the bearing from a, from a um, wear standpoint may not get there, but the grease will never run short. Now, when you have a greasable spindle, the uh, advantage there is that you can purge the grease out. Um, you can always be putting fresh grease in there, but you have some inherent problems, okay? Um, the grease fitting, if it gets dirty and you pump grease in on top of that, you're pumping contamination in the spindle. The bearing actually lasts longest when it's only partially greased like this. If you pack this thing 100% full of grease, that grease uh, really gets pumped hard and it produces more heat. And so you don't necessarily want your bearing drowning in grease. And when you have a greasable spindle, you have to go to an open style bearing, which is very vulnerable. You know, your lower bearing, any crud that's in there, it's gonna settle down in this bearing and get chewed there. And the top bearing will go dry. And so with greasable spindles, you have to very, very consistently grease them and keep them all the way full to have the full advantage of that greasable spindle. And it doesn't necessarily add a lot of life. Now, you also look at how much grease you pump into that spindle and it's gonna add up to something at $8 a tube of grease. Um, and then the time and discipline of making that a weekly task that um, your crew has to do, or they don't do and then the spindle fails, right? So a sealed system, it's trouble free, just runs. Very easy to manage. And so um, there's definitely arguments for both sides. We found that with a sealed system, with a dual chamber, with initial fill of grease there, that we're getting long, long life out of it. We also use um, a very particular grease that's doing some work for us to, to handle moisture absorption and um, to not get 
uh, dry and cakey. So um, using high-end grease is also important. Another thing you'll see on different types of spindles is through bolt or bolted on blades. So this here is a spindle for a bolt on blade. We make both types. Uh, the shaft is threaded and there's a bolt that holds the blade on. A through bolt is where there's a hole all the way through the spindle and you have a long bolt that draws up through and a nut on the top to hold it in place. Oftentimes through bolts are associated more where there are spacers used to change the height of cut. But also a through bolt has a few other advantages. One is that um, that bolt works a little bit more as a shear pin if you were to have a, a blunt impact against the, the uh, side of the spindle, less likely to damage the, uh, the deck, the housing, uh, the bearings, and, and more bending the bolt. The other thing about a through bolt spindle is if you were to hit, the blade were to hit something like a stump or something uh, like that, an abrupt stop, that impact is going to tighten the bolt clockwise here. But that torque will also make the nut rotate counterclockwise um, as well. And so it's less likely to get uh, really, really tight when you have an impact like that. Um, now, even if you do continue to slip, that nut might eventually get stuck to the top of the shaft, but it's nothing that um, Sawzall, Hacksaw couldn't resolve there without replacing the entire spindle. Now, if you have a bolted on blade and you were to hit uh, something that hard, that impact, it's gonna tighten that bolt. Or if you don't change your blade for a year or two years, that bolt could get really, really tight. It's gonna take a long breaker bar to get it off. Um, and so that would be the disadvantage to a bolted on blade. However, the advantage is that if you change your blades weekly, it's really easy to get that right off the bottom. You don't need a second tool on the top, jack the machine up, pop the blades off, and put them right back in. So it's easier to change the blade with a, with a bolt only on the bottom. So that's through bolt versus non. We make them both for different reasons depending on the product line. And there's definitely advantages for both types. Now the other question to answer here is when a spindle does eventually reach the end of its life, is it better to rebuild that spindle or replace the entire spindle? Now, it was an easy decision back when spindles were a housing, a shaft, and two bearings. Um, you'd pull the shaft out, you could go to a bearing house, match the bearing uh, trade number, put the bearing in, and be on your way. Well, as people ex have expected more and more from spindles, manufacturer have had, manufacturers have made you know, better and better spindles with uh, different types of bearings and caps um, and different mechanisms to protect the bearing, make the spindle last longer. There's more parts you have to replace when you do it. And as it turns out with our spindle, generally you're gonna to wanna to replace everything but the housing. And um, if you look at that price difference between buying a whole new spindle versus uh, rebuilding it, you're only talking about $30 maybe. Um, <clears throat> so $30, you gotta put either your time or your dealer's gonna put labor into that rebuild. You're gonna buy a special tube of grease. Um, for that. Now, um, it is possible to do it with very basic tools. Um, you could do it with um, a hammer and some tubes and spacers, but the likelihood that it'll go back together and not fail really quickly is really low. Um, and so for $30, I definitely recommend replacing the entire spindle. Um, you'll just have much better success than trying to put it together yourself. When we build the spindle here, for example, we can put that spindle together in a minute or two with all the right quality checks in place. And really the only difference there is the housing versus not. And it's better value really to buy the spindle with all the parts together versus the parts individually. The price um, for us is more to sell the parts individually. Um, so definite advantage to replacing the whole spindle. The other thing is you're gonna put your time or you're gonna have the dealer put time into taking the spindle out of the machine. And so if you're gonna put that time into it, you may as well get it right by putting a new spindle in there. So it definitely used to be a thing to uh, rebuild a spindle, but more so, no matter what brand you buy, it makes a lot more sense often to replace the entire spindle. Um, it could vary by design a little bit. We do have the parts available, but um, probably not worth it at the end of the day. Hope this video was helpful to you. If you have anything to add, be sure to put them in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We'd like to talk about the different features and aspects of mowers and um, hopefully that's helpful to you. Thanks.